morning everyone uh, let's fertilize some frankincense trees and then we're going to do an orchid mount uh, the uh, dendrobium sucaculei or capillipes we're going to mount that up today so anyway what I've got in this bucket is just some RO water and just two ingredients and I'm going to show them to you and I did it this way because of a reason I've got one dormant frankincense tree and uh, when they're dormant you don't want a whole lot of uh, nitrogen because they're not going to use it they're not producing leaves or anything like that so I've just got two ingredients in here and we'll go look at those right now okay so after I get done fertilizing the um, dormant frankincense tree um, I will be adding this some jacks but right now all I've got are these two ingredients in there now this is a uh, 1% nitrogen and this is a uh, no percent nitrogen as you can see so okay we're gonna go ahead and check out the tree we're gonna fertilize here it's a uh, Boswellia Amiro Okay, here is Boswellia Amiro, which I picked up uh, not too long ago, if I can focus. Now, you can tell this tree is alive. It doesn't look like it's alive. My partner calls it one of my twig, the twig garden, <laughs> which some of my twigs are now trees. So, um, anyway, yeah, this is Boswellia Amiro, uh, one of the more beautiful species, and the uh, resin is very fragrant. But you can see it's still alive. There's a leaf down there. But it's just dormant. And one way you can tell is that it's green. Going all the way up here. Well, the light's kind of flooding it out here. But uh, yeah, anyway, it's alive. You can see green in there. And the bark is peeling on it. Or exfoliating. A lot of frankincense trees uh, exfoliate. So uh, let me go get a pan of water here. Or uh, fertilizer. And we'll give it in. Now, I watered this a uh, little bit yesterday, so it should be pretty good. Okay, when I fertilize, I just give each one a this little old cooking pot full of uh, nutrient solution. And that's all there is to it. So, in she goes. See how well draining that media is? Um, any desert plant or a uh, plant that's from Africa or whatever really needs a well-draining media so yeah you can see the root down there real cool plants really really cool plants so anyway that's it for the Amiro now we're gonna go mix up um, the rest of the uh, nutrients which is just gonna be a scoop of the Jacks 202020 I just do one level scoop like that and that's it. That's all there is to it. And I had to get some coffee so anyway let's go stir this up. Okay, what did I do with my pan? <laughs> it's somewhere. Hold on. Okay, so here's Mr. Tall, the uh, Boswellia elongata. So we're going to go get a scoop and give it a little uh, love here. Now, I usually uh, fertilize these guys about bi-weekly because it depends on the tree, actually, because some uh, grow faster than others, like the uh, elongata here. Um, it's a pretty fast grower. Um, I've had this for about three years now. And uh, you can see how big the trunk has gotten on that. And this was just a little itty bitty twig when I got it. So uh, they do grow pretty quick. So anyway, let's give her some food. And that's that. I feed these guys the quicker growing ones 
the quicker growing ones, if my tongue will work here, um, I feed them usually bi-weekly. Um, the slower growing ones like the Sacra, um, I feed them maybe once a week, or I mean uh, once every three weeks. Depends on the size of the tree also. Okay, here's Boswellia neglecta from Kenya. That is a Kenyan frankincense tree. Get up here and let you look at the root structures. I think this is one of the most beautiful of the frankincense actually. Anyway, we got some fertilizer. I gotta get in here and weed too. Pull those weeds out. And that's that. Okay, I'm gonna move this back down onto the ground. I got it up here, but that's what we're gonna be mounting in a few. So hang out. I'm gonna go finish up uh, and uh, do the fertilization on the frankincense trees. Look at all that growth on that. Okay, so here's Boswellia sacra that we put in the big 30 gallon. Um, planter. They're actually 30 gallon. I thought they were 25 but they're 30s or by trade that's what they're called 30s. So. Anyway now what I'll do is like with this small tree here um, what I will do with that is just uh, uh, just dip it into the bucket so anyway, the next one we're going to do is a Carter Eye, which is right here. And that's in, uh, I think, I think that's about a 10 gallon or 12, I don't know, it's a clay pot. So anyway, we'll go get some more nutrients and do this one. Now I watered these guys uh, yesterday, so they should be, yesterday evening, so they should still be pretty, you know, have quite a bit of uh liquid or uh feed in them uh, not feed but uh water okay here's boswellia socotrana yes from the island of socotra which i just pruned that back a little while ago and it's grown like a wild weed so and i'm still gonna have to get all these off down here all these little nubbins that are growing because i want it to remain looking like a tree and not like a uh, crazy shrub, but uh, anyway, here we go. And the next one we're going to be doing is another Carter Eye here. Now, this has some leaf dieback on it because it's in a pot that's a little bit too small for the tree. So, uh, yeah, we'll get that addressed here in a few. So yeah, we're going to put this guy in a larger pot soon, coming up next month. I love the trunk structure on this guy. Since I've cleaned it up, it's actually starting to look like a tree, but we're going to let it get even bigger than this, because I want that trunk really big. And the only way to do that is put it in a big pot. So I'm right now trying to debate on whether I'm going to put it in a big 30 or one of the 15s that Timothy gave me and uh, we'll go from there oh, got some exfoliation see how the trees exfoliate I think that's one of the neat uh, things about frankincense trees is that they do exfoliate so it's getting a rather nice branch structure too All right, let's get on with the show here and get this guy fertilized. All right. Uh, we're going to move along. I'm going to just go ahead and fertilize a bunch of trees here. And here's my uh, smaller elongata, Boswellia elongata, which should be getting an exfoliation coming soon here. But uh, anyway, I brought that up to show you the uh, leaf structure when they start to mature. They get very pennant leaves on them. Now I bought this as a seedling from out of Africa about a year ago, maybe a year and a half. 
That's another one of my favorite species, so. Well, let's give it some grow juice. And we'll wait for that to drain out and we'll show you the, it should be able to see some of the root structure. Man, I smell frankincense. Wonder why. Yeah, they like this uh, bit of nutrients. And you know what I'm going to have to do is move a couple plants because I don't want them to get the nutrients. And guess which one those are? New ones. The proteas. You do not want these guys to get any nutrients. Now the cow mag would be fine um, with these because it doesn't have the middle and last number. So you could give them a little bit of cow mag and it wouldn't bother them, but very, very, very low levels. All right, here's another Boswellia neglecta from Kenya. And uh, we're going to give that some grow juice. All right, you know, uh, frankincense trees are funny. You can take cuttings off of them and root them. Um, but what's oddly enough is some of them I have done with rooting hormone and some of them I have used no rooting hormone. Now get this. This is a carteri off the one tree that we just watered in a small pot. Look how that is have, struggling. Now that's the one with rooting hormone. Now this is one without. Absolutely vigorous. I don't know why, but it is. It's vigorous. Now I also give the same uh, nutrients to the myrrh trees also. That's a myrrh tree. I just pruned that back a little while ago. Uh, a couple weeks, a few weeks ago. So that is uh, Camiphora shimperi. So that's what I've been hearing rustling around in here. Let's get this guy out of my greenhouse. Okay, so another tree that I don't show you a whole lot of. This is uh, Boswellia dioscoridis uh, from Socotra as well. Um, now I just pinched this back out of the top, the top of it. I just pinched it so it would start branching out. But I think what we're going to start doing here is... Uh, um, we're going to cut it back, real way back, and then uh, root. We're probably going to cut this guy back from like here, maybe to here, and let it branch, start branching out on the side here, and then take all this as cuttings. So as you can see, this is uh, starting to branch out. I top the top out here, and it's already starting to sprout out. Um, lovely blue coloration on the leaves. This is a blue form. So, fairly cold hardy too. Uh, if you live in zone 9B, this is a good one. So, yeah, I've had that for about, oh, three, going on four years maybe. One of the first ones I got. So, anyway, uh, where's my fertilizer? I thought I had it. Oh. So, yeah, this is another tree I'm going to have to repot real soon because the media is uh, starting to break down a little bit. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to do a repot on this real soon also and uh, see what comes about. I'm not going to let this tree get super, super big, um, but uh, we are going to do a repot. So that one is done. Okay, well, I tell you what, guys, um, I'm going to finish this up, but as far as uh, the nutrients go for the frankincense trees, that's it, and that's what I use for the entire Bursaracea family that I grow. Uh, Bursaracea means Bursara trees, or the American frankincense, or Mexican frankincense, and uh, hold on, I'll get one of those guys. So, yeah, this is a Bursara microphylla. And real pretty tree. Let me get you up close. This one has a little bit of nutrient deficiency. We're getting a little chlorosis on the leaves here. And I just recently pruned that back. So, uh, 
Yeah, what it is, it's an iron magnesium deficiency. So, which the, we're going to remedy that right now. So, and uh, get you up close so you can see the root. Neat tree. Has a very piney scent, too. Um, very piney. Um, and we'll bring up a bursarophagoroides and give you an update on that since I've repotted it. I've got two, uh, three bursara trees. One is a, a bifolia, I think, or bifola, uh, biflora, that's it. And uh, the other one is phagoroides, so we'll go get the phagoroides. All right, this is uh, bursara phagoroides. You can see how much that's grown since I've repotted it. Really love that pot too. So let me step back here. Such a beautiful tree and it smells so wonderful. It's got a very orange, citrusy, piney kind of scent to it. Now that's going to be in this pot for a good while. All right, I'm going to fertilize this guy and continue fertilizing, and we'll be back with a uh, orchid mount with the uh, Dendrobium sucaculei. All right, we'll see you in a minute. Okay, so we're back now. We're all done fertilizing all the frankincense trees and whatnot, and uh, bursara trees, and myrrh trees, and olive trees, and acacia trees, and so everybody's had their morning feed today so and uh, we're looking at cattleya jungle spots here but we're not going to talk about cattleya jungle spots which once this bloom uh, season is done we're going to mount this guy definitely going to mount that on one of the mounts that timothy made for me and uh, let it rock and roll on that so anyway let's go mount uh, dendrobium jenkinsii shall we let's hop into it i got to get a mount ready here uh, do this here. Let's get this going. There's the uh, Dendrobium. I called it Jenkinsii earlier. I guess I must have Jenkinsii on the brain or something. But yeah. anyway, what we're going to do, we're just going to. Uh, I've got this all set up, as you can see. A little piece of uh, fishing line. But I like to secure mine with a um, uh, twist tie. It makes for a better hold, I think. So, anyway. Bring that up. I at least want it over one suitable here. Okay. Okay. Let's spin that around a bit. Okay, yeah, that's secured. Okay, there's our uh, ring this moss out a bit. Okay, there we go. 
I'm going to put one more knot in that. And we're good. And we'll trim this down. And we've got a mounted uh, Dendrobium sucaculei or uh, capillopes. I know I called this uh, Dendrobium jenkensii earlier. And uh, since we were away, I went to the doctor and got blood taken for blood work. And we went to Ikea and found a uh, shelving unit on sale for $15 from Metro Shelving. So what a good buy. And this is going to work out a whole lot better. My orchids aren't crowded up now. Um, yeah, this is working out real good. So anyway, we'll see you in the next uh, video. Thanks for watching and for subscribing. And uh, have a good one. Get out in your gardens and make stuff grow. See ya.